Hi everyone. Thank you for checking my out, me out on my channel where I talk about everything relational trauma and healing in this little corner on the internet where I make it okay to not be okay. And where I say if you can whip it in your mind, you can whip it everywhere else in your life. Today I'm going to look at five type of parenting styles. Mothers, dads, all of us can embody this type of, you know, parenting styles. So the first one, five types, the first one is the distant parent, right? So you can have a distant parent who is right in the home, right? Doesn't engage. They're physically there. But, you know, I think most of the time men present this way, especially, you know, after kids, 30s, 40s and beyond. Um, they go to the man cave. So they're there physically, but emotionally disconnected from maybe their partner also, maybe from, you know, their kids as well. They don't connect emotional level, talk, like talk to their kids about, you know, needs, different things, questions, how school, you know, really connect in that level. They might be providers, you know, which like in my case, my dad was like that, you know, still healing my daddy issues. <laughs> I've always known that though. Um, so, you know, great dad, not perfect. He has a lot of his own shortfalls from his own childhood. But from where I come from, does anybody do therapy or self-help things? That's a whole different podcast. But so distance in that sense so the parents are there but you don't have that connection it's all about discipline 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 um in my journey of situationships my last long-term situationships i choose to call it that my last term long-term situationship you know was like that because culturally many of us are shown that you know like the dolphin story in one of the my recordings you know what you're shown you know, so if you're a dolphin and you're shown that in order to gain attention or get food, or get love, you have to perform. So that's what you do. But when you're in your natural habitat, like the dolphin doesn't have to do all these jumping jacks to be able to get what their needs, their needs to be met. They naturally just go for it, after it. That's how God made them to go after it. But when they're, you know, groom to think that they have to be performative in order to get their needs met as a dolphin in an aquarium it's similar to that so many guys think many women think it's okay to be emotionally distant because growing up maybe that's what you're shown your mom your dad your aunties your grandparents you know your leaders the church that's how they roll in their you know, they're, they're all spaces. So that's what you're exposed to. That's what we think it's okay. Um, but, you know, physically they're providing material stuff, but it doesn't meet that emotional need. So that generational, you know, trend, I choose to not call it generational trauma. It can be traumatizing depending on resilience too. You're going to have a distant parent, but still have that core resilience to be able to still do well in life but it's all about reflecting and knowing and putting verbiage to what it is that you experienced and moving forward to it to also find the best way to now pass on to your children, to your next generation, uh, maybe better, right? Better because of how you experienced it and didn't feel good. So that's the distant parent. So totally disconnected, physically there, or might not totally even be there. Might show up once or twice a year. Might say they are showing up, but never show up. So very inconsistent in that sense. So they're distant, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of it. You know, there's people who just didn't have that parent. They were raised by, you know, a, a foster parent. They were raised by a grandparent. They were raised by that auntie. They were raised by the church community. So it shows up differently. So distant. So knowing that that's what it is. And healing from there, because that exists, knowing that you're not alone. Then 
the 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 needy parents so i did a video recently about parenting and burnout and the overwhelm that comes with it so feeling like you need your kids especially as they grow into young adults and adults when they have their family when you become needy and dependent and your whole life circles around your kids then you become a needy parent you see the picture i'm creating so you're constantly if it's especially a son if it's an only son check out my video on you know before you marry that it was an african man or asian man but it, it just also speaks to all kinds of cultures um that you know some of our in-laws parents become needy on the sun even they're married they're pulling them back oh calling them up you know i need you to go fix this in my house because they still think their son has to be like their little husbands because they never have the ability to go out there and look for their own partners if their partners were gone or deceased or whatever it looked like they just didn't build purpose for their life so their life still centers a whole lot around their children and their, maybe their sons so so to speak especially if they're only son in the family right so they become the little man and so be careful seeing to your son that they're the little man in the house here so now you're the little man you're the the, the man of the house now that's too much burden to put on a son so too much as a parent so you're needy as a needy parent uh and then a competitive parent the parent especially moms can have that they compete a lot with their daughters you know so being careful with that especially in a dynamic where there's a lot of toxicity from the maybe the um you know the the other partner if it's a heterosexual relationship for example i'm speaking to that that's probably what i'm familiar with or that's what i've lived through my you know lived experience i'm speaking from that lens so for that parent mom who might be competitive with their daughter so to speak i don't know much research on um a, a father competing in the space whatever space it would look like with sons could be similar uh, but i've seen that with women really competing for attention from husband so to speak um from a daughter especially if that that husband or parent is not careful or aware enough to meet the needs recipient Focate the need for the wife or the female partner and they're shedding more of the attention on the daughter where it's, you know you your partnership with your wife or with your your woman should be first um pour into that comfort before you pour into the daughter so if you're showing your daughter a whole lot of attention i've seen this you know you're giving your daughter flowers you're calling your daughter honey you're calling your daughter babe and you don't even call your long-term girlfriend your fiance or your wife those terms of endearment or show them that type of level of attention communicating loving hugging and you're doing that it can start to com 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 create compet competition competition between a mother and the daughter and if that mother has abandonment issues and they have inhaled their own childhood issues it can start to create resentment truly between mom and and mother and child especially if it's a tween a teenager young adult and they also have a strong personality or they have entitlement that type of personality ooh, can really cause a lot of havoc between mom mother and daughter so being careful to not be competitive with your child or daughter that once again goes back to building your own happiness your inner self and working on yourself and finding purpose for yourself outside of your relationship long term or marriage or whatever finding joy purpose and internal rest for yourself as a parent so the competitive parent looks like that where it's come comes that batting heads with that person 
a parent who wants to be best friends with their child, right? As parents, for me, the last one will be controlling parents. So having a little bit of that control, because as parents, you have to take control. You have to take charge of things. You know, I look at it like, you know, when I used to work in ICU, when situations are happening as a parent, as a lead nurse, as a nurse, as a provider, whatever your, you know, role is, you got to take charge. You got to say, like, let's go. This is what is happening. The patient is going to fall. So therefore, what do we need? We need to put an alarm. The patient is losing oxygen. What do we need? We need to put the oxygen on. So now put that same scenario. I use that analog a lot in the home. We got to go. What do we do? We need to get out of the room, get off the phone, go to bed on time, wake up on time, catch the bus on time. All this requires some level of control. This is how we're doing it. Kind of put your foot down as a parent. If a child, children are seeing that you're weak all the time, you're crying, you can't set the rules, you're wishy-washy, you set a rule, you go back, you go back on it, you're, you're kissing up to them a lot. You don't be strong and be like that. Or you think the school has to raise your children or yeah, the church has to fix them. You bring them to Sunday school and you want them fixed or you want the Holy Spirit to ta da No, you have some children who have difficult personalities and sometimes you need community, you need therapy to help them to be good humans. So you gotta have some level of discipline for yourself, for them and for the and for them. And for them, definitely. So that control has to be a level of it, but not completely controlling, like my way or no other way, like crazy, abrasive, narcissistic, um, trying to find the word, you know, like control, like Russia versus, you know, uh, like, like, like Ukraine, you know, like taking over their lives, like, I pay the bills here. This is my house. You do as I say, you know, that kind of... You're breaking their spirit. So a little control to some degree. Rally community, therapist, counselor, pastor, a coach, a mentor. Get up. You know, family, friendship, support. They're in sports. Make friends with the moms, the dads. Form a community around your children. So have some control, but not totally controlling. And don't be best friends with your children. Like befriending on social media, making comments with your friends, become best friends with their, their best friends. Yes, be cordial and respectful. Like when my kiddos' friends come over, I love it. I take them out. But I give them space. I step out because I have a life. I need to do my thing. I need to jump on, look at my... You know, list of dates that I need to go on. I need to look at my podcast, my business, and my finances, my this, my that, my self-care. So when they're having their time, it's great because then I get to have time for me too. So that's a good thing. So we rotate myself and some of her best friends. So sometimes she goes to their place. I get some time. They come to my place. They get the time. So we have this community, sometimes community doesn't always have to be blood related. Truthfully, some of us, by default, we don't have blood related community because, because we traveled. I still have family that I love very much back home and blah, blah, blah. And they come here too. But really having those boundaries with your kiddos. You don't want to be best friends with your child. So I tell them, I tell them all the time. I'm your mother. I am not your friend. The day I become your friend or your best friend, then I'm failing as being a parent. I want my children to be like, I hate you. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing my good job. I hate you, but don't slam that damn door because that door is going to come off. <laughs> it will come off. Like, I mean, it will come off. I don't play with my kids because when I, I was raised by a dad who was a teacher, military mindset, but I try not to be like that. But some level of discipline. Of course, I haven't raised my children completely done yet. I'm still in the process. But I have a teenager. So I'm kind of there already. In the next few years, we'll be off to college. So I think I have some good amount of experience to say that you do have to have some level of control and not become their best friends. So those are the types of parents to recap the controlling, the distance. The needy parent, the competitive parent, 
and then the parent would want to be best friend. If you can whip up your parenting style, which style do you fall into? Share with me. What is your parenting style? Or do you have a little bit of Sometimes I have a little bit of each, but more to control a little more. And then as they grow, like my teenage daughter, have less control. They are more independent. If you're raising your child, they're getting to be teenagers, young adults, and they still cannot have, you know, release that little bit of control to them so they can handle certain things. It's time to look at it. Look at therapy and support. Because you don't want them to be 30 or 40 and still in your home. Or smoking MJ all the time or playing video games all day and be couch potatoes. <laughs> it's hard, but it's doable with support. If you can whip it in your parenting style, you can whip it everywhere else in your life. Until the next video, catch you. Love you.